Alrighty, I've had a lot of people ask me about doing horn installs and uh, I'm going to first talk about a few things. One is they don't come in carbon fiber. This is a prototype for me, my own personal one. Um, we have two primary horns that uh, we have on the market. We have what's known as a mini body. Mini body pretty much denotes what it means. Uh, it's small it, or shorter from front to the back uh, versus a larger body, which you can see here, which is you know obviously got a much longer uh, throat length here. Also, the height of the throat from here to here is different. Uh, this is roughly about uh, almost. Uh, almost a half an inch uh, difference between the two. And then the length of the throat uh, from here to here uh, is also going to be uh, shorter on the mini body. Now the mini body and the big body have two uh, distinctive functions in terms of the way they work. If you actually look at them like this, you'll notice that the, there's a throat angle that heads off at a sharper angle here uh, in the mini body, where on the big body it comes out at a shorter angle. Now what this is good for is, is that whenever you're doing an installation into the vehicle, you want a lot of cross information across the vehicle. And that's dictated with, when you have it mounted to your dash line, or behind the dash line, will help dictate which body you're going to use. If you're going to be mounted to the edge of the line of the dash here, most of the times you'll find that a mini body will work really well. If you can mount it farther back, the big body would be a better choice because your angles across your vehicle are what you're trying to achieve. And that angle is going to help make your center channel, your phantom center channel, uh, is going to be the illusion you're going to get. And with a mini body versus a big body, uh, again, you can see here, you can really see the angle when they stand up like this, you can see the angle going across. The angle is dictated by also the width of the vehicle. You know, so however wide the vehicle is, wherever this, ang wherever this angle is positioned, will dictate where they cross in the center of the vehicle. And the, the goal is, is you want the crossing to happen about where your ears are located in your, uh, when you're sitting in the driver's position uh, or in the passenger's position. And so you have to look at the width of the vehicle from right to left, and then you're going to need to also see stuff. You're going to need to know uh, if the height for the bottom of the dash from the floor up in here is the same on each side. It can be off. One of the rules about horns is, is that when you mount it in, here like this, you can go up or down slightly off from each other from right to left, but you really want to keep the front to backs the same. So you have to measure uh, your dash lines on both sides. Now one of the things that uh, I find is a rule about uh, dashes is that the driver's side uh, firewall is usually deeper than the passenger side. So try measuring from the front to the back of the vehicle to some position in the back, like in this case, I'm using the, I'm using here to dictate front to back because I know that that's going to be even. Another one of the rules is where to position the throat. Now this is the leading edge of the throat at the, the far end. So here's your motor here, here's your outside edge. Uh, and, and this is the question that I've had asked too. When you mount the bodies, you want to mount them with the motors toward your kicks. You do not mount them like this. That is the wrong way to mount them. You want to you want to create a cross action inside the car. So this edge here, what you do is, is you sit down in your driver's position and you will take a measurement from your left ear straight across your dash. And so wherever that wherever your ear lines up on your dash, you can go anywhere from two to six inches over. And again, however wide the vehicle is, you can measure your angle across the dat across the angle to see where that intersection is. Now in this truck I've dictated I found out that the my angle, my ear is about right here. And so I'm gonna head over to about right here. So I'll end up with the with my line of my horn about right here is what it'll be. Now I do all obviously have this pedal here. Now the cool thing is, is that on a horn body, you can cut up all the way to this edge of the throat. And that's no problem. You just don't want to cut into the throat. And you can do the same thing on this side here. You can cut it all the way over. This is a defected uh, horn. On a big body, uh, you can do the same thing all the way on the outsides. And you could, you know, here I could show you just, you know, here's a big body in this thing. You can mount it like here. Now the reason why I'm not going to use a big body in this truck is that actually I can't. Uh, because on the passenger side, the blower casing 
uh, is going to be, it's like right here. And I'm going to use the driver's side to show, but it's about right in this neighborhood. And so what ends up happening is, is that my, I can't get far enough over because of the driver's side because of the pellet. And so the driver's side is going to dictate somewhat of how I'm going to do the installation of the horn. Now, from here, once I have found out which of the two horn, which horn I'm going to use, or how I'm going to, you know, uh, where I'm going to place them into my dash, I have to figure out how to mount them. In this vehicle, oops, there is absolutely nothing underneath there to mount to. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to create a bracket way up here. I'm going to, have to take a bracket from here to the back of my throat. I'm going to, to do what I call a hanging horn, where the only thing that's going to hold it are brackets. Uh, it's just going to hold it in midair. I have a, a bracket or a hole here in the dash that I can use. And then also here on the bottom side of this hood latch, which is attached to a piece of metal up here. And so I'm going to use these sections to do my, my bracketing. And I will just simply place a bracket on the body pre-drill through the body and then sink screws into this and then simply screw it up. Now I'm going to do an old school style of covering. I'm going to do, a, it'll be a piece of wood that cuts across here with an opening on it and that will be how the, you know, cosmetically it will blend into the dash. This is the area that if somebody is going to kick the horn, uh, this is the area you want to do. So I like to have a lot of bracketing on it. Um, here you can see that, that the bracket is uh, quite different on many different levels. Uh, up here at the top, uh, swings around, comes on the back side, and I'm using the, the actual mounting structure, uh, the mounting bolt uh, for it. I'll put a nut on this one to make sure that this won't come loose at all. But uh, give me a second, and I'll get this hung, and I will show you what it looks like when it's done. You know, it's nicely mounted in here. It's nice and tight. It doesn't go anywhere. Now, one of the things that you will find out when hanging a horn, several things will happen and they're illusions. So this is something you have to get used to when you're doing a horn. The dash line on almost all vehicles I've ever seen uh, so far that I've done installs on, the, and I believe that the reason why manufacturers do this is it's optical illusions. The dash line actually goes upward at an angle slightly, just, just slightly. They, it's usually from here to here is, is just slightly. It could be a quarter of an inch, it could be a half an inch in difference. Um, I believe that's an illusion, uh, so that when you're sitting in the dash, the line looks flat. Um, the other thing is, is that when you're looking at the horn across the dash this way, uh, if you use the dash as a, again, if you try to use the dash as a, a, a reference point, the problem is, is that the dash again, it slightly comes out at an angle that direction. So it's, it's actually, as it goes to the center of the car, it's coming out in this direction. So if you mount the horn, in following the dash, you're actually going to turn the horn outward. Uh, the one of the other questions that's also is asked quite often about horns is, is that should you angle them? Uh, the answer is no. The design of the throat is designed so that you don't have to angle them. The angling will act, it's automatic, it's taken care of inside the throat because this doesn't work like a normal conventional speaker. Uh, it, it, it's radiant, pa the actual radiation pattern is, is different than a conventional speaker. It's actually going to use the, the dash itself as part of its extension to the, of the throat. Um, and so again, you, you want to make sure that you, you measure from, from these two sides here to make sure that the, the actual horn is, is going uh, in a straight line. And, and the best way to do that is to find some point that is square in the vehicle. Uh, it could be something like, you know, here where the seat sits, you know, the attachment of the seat. You can measure from, from this point to here. Um, or again, like I did back here, I used the, the back of the truck. Uh, where the uh, the actual bottom portion of the seat is. Now that's squared into the vehicle, so I don't have to worry about it. And so I was able to measure this. And when I did this, I actually found out that from here to here, uh, the difference um, in between the two was like, um, I think it was like a full centimeter. Uh, yeah, it was about a centimeter uh, difference between here to here uh, in comparison to the dash line. So again, uh, whenever mounting horns and stuff, just make sure the, the sh you know that they they sit parallel to the floor. You know you want them parallel to the floor, uh, and you want them also to sit horizontal uh, with each other. Uh, and remember.